Hi, I'm Danny Nightmare, and behind the camera is the beautiful Glory B movie, and hiding in the cars is Lols. We're here at the Rodeo Drive-In in Bremerton, Washington, and we are going to be seeing Escape Room 2, and for some weird reason, there'll be a bonus video as we do a Let's Go See of the movie that came out two years ago, Fantasy Island. It's pretty random, but there you go. Well, we were too tired when we took our trip, and in fact, you fell asleep during Fantasy Island. <laughs> so we're gonna now give you that review of the rodeo of Escape Room 2, Tournament of Champions? Um, Mortal yeah. Kombat. I, know, I wish we would have seen Mortal Kombat instead. I love One that movie. has a tournament in it, at least. Yes, any movie with a tournament. I, I guess there was a tournament in this. I don't think so, though. I don't it know. really wasn't, and honestly, I feel like a lot of people in the first escape room were better at solving the puzzle puzzles than this one. So I, I didn't get the championship vibe. I mean, this should be like the all-stars of like one of those reality shows, like Hell's, Hell's Kitchen. Like the best of the best are competing for the win, and the impression I got was that these people were not even as skilled as the people in the first film. Yeah, I mean, everybody, I liked how everybody kind of had their thing, that, but they didn't elaborate on it very much. There, there's the one girl and hers was like, I was in a one where nobody could feel pain, so that was our thing. And there was the priest, and I guess all their faiths were tested, but he kind of just lucks his way through it. I wanted to know more about these people, but they didn't really tell a shit. <laughs> um, there's one who's like, knows how to survive traveling or something like she's travel she agent was a or travel blogger she was yeah. in, they were she was in a group of influencers and i actually kind of liked the idea of their themed escape rooms where they collected a lot of people who had um similarities and you know like they kind of have these gimmicks and one of the characters is played by uh i can't remember her name but she was in teen wolf she played the banshee girl in that and she can't feel pain. Like there's so much you could do with that, especially in one of these escape room situations, one of these kind of like torture movies. And they really don't do a whole lot with it at all. Yeah, it sounded like those would have been better movies. Like the escape rooms that we didn't see, like that got them there. Yeah, I'd like to see like a Saw movie with somebody who can't feel pain. I think that would be really fascinating. And these escape room movies so far kind of verge um, just to the edge of what a Saw movie or like a hostile movie offers you, but um, they play a little too safe and they never quite full, go full in. So definitely a concept I want to see again in one of those movies that has the balls to go full in. Yeah, and then of course we have our two surviving people from the first movie, and they're like wanting to get proof of the escape room tortures that they endured. It's mostly just the one girl who survived. The other guy is just more kind of dedicated to supporting her but he really wants to put the escape room behind him like he's traumatized he's yeah. got some severe ptsd and he keeps telling her like i don't want to do anything that's going to get us back into those people's um in, into their uh realm and you know end up in another trap and I, not to spoil too much but they make it very obvious in the very beginning of this movie that those people are kind of gunning for them and that's obviously why they're back in the traps however she didn't es she wasn't the one who won. He was the one that won, but they don't seem to give a shit about him that much. But and I will say, Escape Room actually surprised me. I'm talking about the first movie here. Um, I thought that the puzzles were pretty interesting. I really liked Deborah Wall. Um, I think that's her name, who was in uh, Daredevil and True Blood. I yeah, really like her. I think she should have been the main character because she had the most interesting character story. Um, but I liked the movie. I was it was thrilling. I was really invested. I thought the ending was a little like okay, you know, I guess I'm down for another one. Why not? But I did enjoy that movie. It was a solid, you know, B minus type movie. This movie didn't offer that. It's not nearly as thrilling. You're not nearly as invested. In fact, a lot of things I liked about the first movie, like some of the character um, characters that I liked, uh, I feel like it kind of ruined it. Yeah, and. I could have swore at the like post credits of that first movie that they ended up on a plane escape room. Maybe that was just a dream, but I feel like this movie is just looping around to that 
and I don't get why. <laughs> like, Lols even says, like, if there's a third movie, you can just skip the second one and go straight to the third movie. That's the thing is with a sequel, um, especially a sequel that is set up in this way where they're really telling you that they're going to offer you more of maybe this universe, this corporation that's putting people into these deadly escape rooms. And so that's what I think you're expecting going into this and you're not getting that. I came out of this movie, I know nothing more about this group except for they have like a penchant for creating escape rooms with themed guests yeah. <laughs> and even then I, I never saw any of those so I honestly do not know anything more about this corporation than I, I knew in the first film. I feel like it kind of does what a sequel sometimes does where they're like okay here's your information is that we're all over the world and you can't escape us. But I feel like Hostel 2 did that way better. I and love Hostel 2. There's a lot of movies I feel like have already done that and done it better. So that's the only it more just, information I got is like it, they're everywhere. It didn't offer anything more. A sequel in a lot of ways should try to up the ante and this one didn't offer any more creative puzzles. Yeah. It didn't offer any more horror. It didn't offer any more thrills. It didn't give you a further exploration into this world. It honestly offered nothing. It's a nothing movie. And I hate to say that because it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's in some ways being a nothing movie is is kind of the worst thing. I mean, it didn't offend me. It mm -hmm. wasn't, I, I won't say it's a bad movie. It's just such a nothing movie. It's a movie that really does not need to exist. I know you don't really like me. <laughs> I don't dislike you. I nothing you. Oh, thanks. That's that's special. I didn't feel like the puzzles were that interesting. I liked the acid rain one just because it was visually... I did like that. It was visually kind of thrilling, but it still, as a puzzle, wasn't that great. The bank one, eh, and the one on the train, I thought that had maybe the best puzzle clues kind of solving, but it was also just CGI electricity, so I didn't give a shit really. There's was, also a lot of random happenstance in this one that I feel kind of ruined it, because I think the fun of this, at least the first movie, was solving the puzzles with them, and we didn't really get that in this film. So, I'm just going to say, I think you could go ahead and skip it. Absolutely skip it. Yeah. Do not waste your time with this movie. I don't even think it's worth a rental. I think if you like the first one, keep liking the first one. Forget that this one exists because I don't think you're going to get anything from this movie that's going to enhance that experience. I think this movie is a complete and total waste of your time. Yeah, and probably just insult your intelligence. So Absolutely. We sat through it so you don't have to. But did have a great time at the rodeo. Would love to go back sometime. Though. I recommend the rodeo. I don't recommend the movie. Yeah. <laughs> So, have fun. Uh, and just to give you an insight here, because I know a lot of you hated Fantasy Island. I thought Fantasy Island was fun junk food horror. Uh, yeah, it, it's worse than Fantasy Island, so there's that. Yeah, I'd already <laughs> seen that. It came out, what, two years ago? I didn't really care for it much then. I do appreciate it a little more watching this second time around, but it's still not that good. But Yeah, it Fantasy, was a, Fantasy Island was playing at the drive-in with this movie, so we saw both of them. Randomly. I don't know why they had a movie two years ago that played with it, but... Whatever, I, I actually like that more than Escape Room. Just for some context, it's worth some Fantasy Island, so if you hated that, uh, you're going to absolutely hate this. This movie, I I honestly cannot recommend to you at all. Do skip this film. Mm -hmm. If you do have a local drive-in or it's not too far, please support it and go check it out, though. Cause, yeah. Absolutely. A lot of people, um, I've been telling people about our, kind of our mission to see all the drive-ins in the Pacific Northwest, and a lot of people are like, they're not in our town. They're not in our town either. We drive hours out of our way to go see these drive-ins, but I mean, they're becoming a dying breed. So, so if you have a drive-in within, you know, road trip distance, within, you know, a few hours away, um, go check it out. There's a website online. Um, I'll be sure to give Danny the link to put it in the description that will tell you where the closest drive-ins are to you. And absolutely, when you do check out that drive-in, buy something to eat because concessions are how these places stay open. So support your local drive-ins. Indeed. All right, cut. Yeah. <laughs>